had convinced myself so much that this is my dream, this is my calling, this is what I want. You know? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please do stay tuned. Do hit the subscribe button. And if you're a returning subscriber, shout out to you. So I quit school, I quit my job. I'm clearly like very good at quitting it because all these things happen in a span of let's say a year. I'd like to finally share that journey fully. I've shared parts of it, some parts in depth, some parts not so much in depth. So if you weren't following me on social media or you do not follow me on social me media, you won't know the full story. fact that I won't cover everything I want to cover in this one story. I think this part will be mostly about the journey and another time i will then talk about like just dealing with feeling like a failure quitter and so forth the dreams i had as a kid were very funny but eventually i wanted to become a chartered accountant the dream was sold to me and i bought it i bought into it listen anything that spelled comfort in the future i was for also i'm not talented so in high school when i started working hard and i figured out that i can be good at you know these two subjects i was like this is perfect i found my part i had convinced myself so much that this is my dream this is my calling this is what i want you know um it it, it became the goal it became everything at 2014 after my first year we excelled baby girl we knew this is our dream this is us this is where we're going ambition is skyrocketing honey and second year shambles like we passed just by the neck like life was testing us are we sure yes we are definitely this is just a hurdle we're going to get over and then third year failed and I'm just like, huh? Me. Me. Um, I'm definitely going to cover that in a different video because that was a lot. Anyway, that happens. We get to 2017. I'm repeating the year. Now I'm just like, listen, I'm just going to do what I can. You know, if it doesn't work out, this is a sign from God. Okay. Um fast forward 2018 okay so we passed 2017 by the neck like just passed um uh the only subject we were actually excelling in was financial accounting and i'm just like hmm. anyway then we get to postgrad and i'm not there like i am not there bro <sighs> mind body belly i can't um and at this point it's hard to say anything to quit anything to just try and like leave because i have so many obligations bursaries people are paying for your fees bitch like what do you mean also if you quit what are you going to do you don't have that luxury like to just like stay at home for a year and figure it out and so i just go in and i remember starting the year feeling like i really need a gap year i really need time out girl what do you mean so i'm fighting with myself um fighting with everything that i believed in once and like it's i don't i don't feel the same anymore um and i wish i'd known then that it's okay to change your mind it was more it was harder of course because i had all these other things to consider i couldn't just put myself for first and i remember in 2017 i started going to therapy and my therapist kept mentioning how i wasn't you know centering myself in the decisions that i needed to make um and like there were a lot of talks about me like uh possibly quitting school in 2017 already and i just i, I couldn't i was just like i can't like my family uh, my bursaries you know i owe people money people are paying for me to do this how am i just going to like up and quit and be like i don't want to do this anymore and so 2018 
you know we, i tried to start the year right i tried to go to hospital and you know i didn't finish my days again story for another day but yeah no it wasn't gonna work <laughs> i didn't put in the work mentally um and it definitely showed throughout the year and to the point where i then just like quit i went to into a test after studying my butt off and i was like after the first session this is not my position this i cannot personally deal with another fail for the year so we're gonna quit and if we're meant to we'll come back next year and do this again because this is not working and uh, i left the test venue i packed my bags like we had a second session i just knew like i just you know when you know i knew i packed my books i went with that trolley thingy put in my car i rushed to the hospital because i really needed to see my psychiatrist i think i was planning to have like a backup like not necessarily sick note or whatever but in case I do decide to quit, I need, you know, whoever might ask me questions to know that I'm not making this shit up. I was so scared of the repercussions. It was for like, I'm quitting, I know I'm quitting, but now I need someone else to verify that I need to quit. Um, because I didn't feel for a long time, which is something you, I, I struggled with, with my illness, is I, I didn't feel that I was, justified for feeling the way i was feeling like if i didn't feel like working if i didn't feel like going to school um if i just i felt like it, it couldn't be based on your feelings and only when i saw like professionals did i feel like oh i wasn't i wasn't wrong oh like i wasn't being extra and it doesn't help when people keep saying they're checking on you and you're not grand and they think we are zinzis are like you're not grand but you can still like go out whatever like i i a lot of people didn't know that was those were my unhealthy coping mechanisms like yo if i wasn't doing that i was sleeping all day every day so it was like and that's how i even justified myself for like going out so much i was like when you're at home, you're sleeping anyway, so let's just go out and drink. I think that's what made me made it so hard for me to quit because it's like, but it is your fault. You didn't put in the work. And it's like, how do you put in the work when you don't want to? Like when you don't want to be here, when you don't see the point, you know? And we dealt, we had to, we dealt, we dealt. So I get to the, uh, the clinic and i'm parked outside um i find out that my psychiatrist at the time wasn't in so i set an appointment um after setting the appointment i just go into the car and i cry like so i get to my car and i just sit down my heart is beating very fast like did you just leave like your second session is about to start are you seriously not going to go back is this like it is are we really doing this like are we finally not like given an if what you know the repercussions are are we finally just going to do you are you finally going to do what you want to do for you and i'm just sitting there in the car and again i need the validation because now my psychiatrist does not here my psychologist does not here like the people i thought i needed aren't available for me right now no one is going to give you the stamp of approval you need my love so how are we going to deal with this i call my lady my lady like literally calms me down she tells me everything that i needed to hear she affirms me she even gives me like the strength to call my mom and i remember calling my mom that the tears will stop so i'm gonna try speak through the tears so i remember calling my mom and my aunt so like i treat them like both my parents um and my mom my mom just said come home my mom just said come home my aunt said we can't lose you to this go home and i didn't know how much i needed to hear that how much 
I just needed for my parents to be the ones to be like, dude, you don't have to do this. Um, I thought I needed all these other people, all these, you know, professionals uh, to like verify that like I'm allowed to take time out. So I finally deregister um, with the plans of going back to school. I am over this. I do not want to see that place. I listen. You know when I say I'm done with this, I am done with this. Done. I apply at UNISA, I apply at UJ, I even get like conditional acceptance from UJ. Listen, I am ready to never see the University of whatever again. Because I couldn't, like I was like, this place has tormented me. And I mean, it could be just me or like, but like, I don't have... I have very ooh, uh, no it was bad it was uh, we taking since 2016 that place has been okay 2015 sort of but 2016 it really started showing me flames and I didn't want to see it again after applying now I've gone home I visited my mom back in Joburg what are we going to do let's find like jobs to do um while we wait for the next school year to begin job search in Zara is the bottom at the time i didn't know how bad job searching was because i wasn't in desperate need i just wanted something to pass time and you know i had about three to four months to give um luckily i got a job offer as an au pair and i was like oh that sounds great that really sounds great it's very far from my field of study now we get to 2019 the nightmare that the beginning of 2019 was guys 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 wow like when i say wow like wow um you need to say something i don't remember but they said something about missing forms they're telling me in german or something that yeah i wasn't accepted or like i wasn't accepted on the basis that i didn't give all my information uj said i wasn't accepted on the basis that I didn't complete um, my undergrad in the previous year or I didn't finish my postgrad and fail it in order to be considered. So essentially they wanted me to finish the year and fail and then they could consider me. I, uh, Eunice, I didn't even try to fly. I wasn't willing to drive there. Nope. It's like whatever. UJ, I went, I tried, failed, like... You know when the universe is fighting you i went to uj and they're just like nah bro nah nah and then the one day i went and the one lady who could help me refused to help me so it was just like is this another confirmation that i'm not meant to do this then like it was my family not my mom and my aunt my external like my extended family they were just like, nah, you can't quit, you can't quit, try it, try it. So I was like, okay, what are, what are I gonna lose? Cause like at this point, we're on zero. Uh, luckily, it's like accepts my late application on the basis that I was in the system the previous year. And then, you know, but it was, they gave me the runaround for the application. Like there was a new person at the School of Accountancy. He didn't know what he was doing. He said, no, I have to do third year again. Then there was that. Then there was mo moving back and forth with different pieces, um, with different people in the building, getting confirmation that I can apply late, getting whatever I needed to take to the application office. <sighs> then finally applying, and then having them lose my application for like a week or two. Like every time I call to inquire like where we are because school started you know test series about to come soon I need to be a student um they couldn't find it in fact they doubted that I even applied because they lost it eventually I was taken up to like the people who I guess run the application site the one lady found it on the system something was going on I don't know what it was but she told me to go to CLM and tell them about this and like, I don't know, get them to kind of like 
risk i don't know what the plan was but i'd go to clm clm said no we have to wait for them at applications office to like sort you out i don't even know if that's the name of the office admissions admissions office needs to sort this out before we can do anything and now i'm going through that for two weeks straight um yeah at this point i'm just like after all of that i'm like i'm grand i'm good like why am i forcing this gun in because maybe you should follow what you want to do you don't want to do this then leave it that's really where i am at this point it's like why are we forcing it when it doesn't want to work with us why why am i getting the run around lord what's the plan here and i eventually just like let it go um i can tell you now like my admission thingy um status adverts was pending for the full year of 2019 at this point i'm like listen baby girl you have an undergraduate degree let's use it let's start working because we don't ca is not your dream anymore becoming a ca that dream ended a long time ago every junior position you find on anywhere tells you that you need like two to three years experience where where so i decide okay actually professional accountancy because um you know you have an undergraduate they have articles obviously that's like your internship so you won't struggle you won't have to tell them about experience you won't have to have experience i stay in Joburg and i search and i'm searching it's hard it's it's tiring like eventually i just go to the sci website and i look at all the accredited institutions and i email almost every single one of them my cv my drivers i don't know no my cv yes i email them my cv and my copy of my id and i tell them that i have a car and i drive and i have a license everything you know what application straight to the email bro unfortunately on the website the cypa website they don't have the email addresses so i'd have to open another tab and copy the name of the company put it on the other tab and see if the company you know has a website or whatever a way for me to communicate or contact them the only ones that i didn't apply for were when if you didn't have a website i was like i if you don't have a website i don't know what kind of environment you have but i don't want to be seen there it was like when i was applying for jobs the year before and people were asking me to fax my cv i'm like fax in 2018 you want me to fax no man get it together get it together some companies did reply they'd say sorry uh we're currently not taking in anyone but we will keep you on the file and then two companies responded um and i had interviews around the same week i think i did have interviews in the same week this was around march of 2019 and uh the one company was worried about my health um and it was like oh i was like if they're asking these questions it means this is the company where i'm not gonna sleep okay and i can't see that for myself so um i went with the second company and the dodgy stupid thing about this whole situation is that the first company was 15 minutes away from me and the second company was an hour away from me but here let me, let me tell you guys let me tell you guys i knew for a fact what kind of environment i needed i knew like i know i can't i'm not the work while under pressure girl don't mock me absent not the girl so if you're warning me already that your job is very demanding and 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 like i don't mind doing my work i'm very competent i want to work i want to do amazing i'm very ambitious however if you guys thrive under constant pressure i can't mock me what absent so other company very small setting i enjoyed it it was very like calm almost casual feel that was i knew that was what i needed i knew that's what i wanted and that's why i chose them and when i say i chose them i think i already knew that like if i do get both offers this is the one i'm going for 
another reason i didn't choose the first company is because they still had second like a callback interview so i was still fighting with other people and then with this company it was just me like i had applied and they were like hey we're not hiring but i mean we got your email and we're interested in having you and i was like listen this looks like it's for me it's i've been chosen you know for this one so that's what happened i chose that company and i worked for four months <laughs> before i quit yeah. four months in i was just like nope no after my first month actually i was just like hmm huh? hmm and again doubting myself seeking affirmation seeking validation for the, my decisions to probably quit not working out now like it's different it's not school like people can't don't have jobs so you constantly reminded that hey bruh should be grateful that you have a job and whatever whatever and now i'm now it's just eating at me i'm getting more sick like my my anxiety and depression have been triggered i'm a mess like a hot mess really hot mess i'm hot mess express my love and i'm not okay so a month after my probation ended i was like peace y'all at the time i didn't even consult my mom i had to know like what my plan b was and coming to korea was always my plan b i was like if corporate doesn't work i'm going to go teach initially we said that as a joke well i said that as a joke to my friends and like family i was like hey bro if corporate don't work out i'm leaving the country I really did quit my job not just on the basis that i i knew that i didn't want to be in corporate but i was still very dependent on my mom um i was grossing 8k like this is not going to work beloved because i am not independent and when i got a job i thought i was going to get independent so right now i am living independently and i couldn't be happier okay so we've had enough context um i'm sorry for how long that was i just wanted you to have an idea and get the full you know feeling of yungindo um to the end to feeling like a quitter to feel like a failure let's address that slow like a little bit because i feel like we'll have to we'll need a different video however um this is an interesting time because apc results just came out and the people who got the apc results were with was started varsity with me so i should have been one of the kids who were waiting for their results um and i can tell you that i am no longer struggling with viewing myself as a failure or you know viewing myself as a quitter because i wasn't triggered by the events i was finally genuinely happy for people be like oh my gosh yes i'm so proud of you but i'd also have to struggle with feelings of disappointment and demotivation and what are you doing with your life and 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 um so the fact that i was able to be so happy for my peers and so proud of them confirmed to me that i am finally doing okay um and how i can tell you i'm doing okay or how we got here is to learn to do you like no one can be you so don't compare yourself and remind yourself why you left like i don't want to do that anymore so how can i be mad or angry at myself that i failed to complete that if i don't want to be there anymore um so that's very important i think also it, it took a while because i still don't know what i want to do however i'm in such a good space that it doesn't really matter right now because i'm taking care of myself i am you know choosing myself i'm putting myself before like my needs above all you know um i can also say for sure that you will still struggle time to time i just haven't in a while because i guess i'm in like you know a honeymoon phase in korea but I can tell you for for certain that you will deal with a lot of times of self doubt and you know confusion and whatever. But I think this is my main point right now is that you choose yourself. 
whatever doesn't serve you doesn't serve doesn't have your best interest at heart that's what you need to worry about whatever you're doing you're doing it for yourself not for anyone else that's it that brings us to the end of the video um thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for actually reaching this point if you did shout out to you don't forget to like comment and subscribe please do not forget to click that red button please do not forget to scroll down and comment there if you have something to say if you have something to share anyway thanks <laughs>